as the Kaduna State Chapter of the Labour Party suspends three of its chieftains and disassociates itself from the Lamidi Papa faction of the party, the breakfast this morning will take another look at the internal struggles threatening the party and how it can rise above it. As technology is evolving, we are going to be looking at the place of tech in architecture and how ripe we are in Nigeria to embrace smart homes. We shall also be taking a look at the headlines and off the press with someone who can give us some good breakdown of some of the headlines on our national dailies. Good morning and welcome to The Breakfast is the Technophile edition of the program this Tuesday morning. I am Maureen. And I am Nyam Gul. We're glad to know that you are there and watching us. Yesterday we were here and we hoped that we are all going to wake up together and enjoy the morning. And today we'll go, we're going to be asking ourselves as the theme of the day, is tech making us smarter or dumber? Are we dumber? Are we smarter <laughs> <laughs> with tech coming up? Uh, I don't know. Well, so, it's become a very important question to ask, especially as some uh, people who have been deeply involved in tech mm -hmm. are beginning to raise concerns, you know, warnings about technology and how uh, it's impacting our lives. Yeah, there was a movie a long time ago. I think the, the star in that movie was uh, Will Smith, and mm -hmm. they called it iRobot. Uh, pro problems that the tech experts are expressing now mm -hmm. were captured in that movie, where, where the robots became so intelligent and they wanted to be independent. They could think for themselves, and they wanted to conquer the world. And exactly that is what is playing out, and some people who are, who are in the tech business are mm -hmm. expressing concerns that this AI when it does come the way we want it to come. No, not the way we want it to come, <laughs> the way we do not anticipate. Well, Jeffrey Hinton, who had worked with Google for over a decade, mm -hmm. left Google not long ago, and is one of those who are raising these concerns. Mm -hmm. And he's worried that uh, AI, you know, the machines could become so intelligent that killer robots could be mm. emerging in the future. And also, of course, we're already aware of how uh, machines now serve in restaurants and all of that. But he's worried that we may get to a point where killer robots will emerge. Mm -hmm. These machines may turn out becoming more intelligent than human beings. So that is terrible thing to happen if mm -hmm. it does happen and i assure you it, it will happen because uh, you you have robots now being created uh, robots that have feelings robots that can be jealous robots that you know haven't <laughs> so, you seen so the men who are marrying robots so in so, asia so, some men have married robots yeah, in asia so well things are crazy uh, so if this happens, there's a tendency the robots might want to take over the world and there may be nothing we can do about it. So in, in trying to make our lives easy and we're bringing a lot of things to make or just rest and the things begin to do things, mm -hmm. uh, robots will now come and begin to have rights and fight for their rights and all that. Nyangul, uh, I tell you, it, this concern... It's scary. It is scary, and it's so scary that recently more than 27,000 people, mm -hmm. including many who are very knowledgeable in tech, um, they have issued an open letter calling for a six-month pause six months pause in the development of technology you know so that is how serious this is but then the question is the tech uh, you know muggles these tech giants will they pay attention would they want to be stopped you see world domination is a thing for a lot of people out there so will they stop and that's one of the one of the things that i think tech giants aim to achieve global domination so would they listen to those who are petitioning, who are writing and saying, guys, let's pause this and have another look at what we are creating so we don't end up destroying ourselves? Yeah, well, the tech guys want to dominate the world. And uh, so many people, there's been a, cons a conspiracy theory for a long time that the pharmaceutical companies uh, seek to dominate the world and a lot of things that happen to us now, diseases that come, are actually created so that they can sell their drugs. That theory is there, even if we cannot prove it, but there are a lot of things that are happening and making us look at 
these theories again and saying, is there some th uh, truth inside it? And uh, some people are also worried that someone who is supposed to be a tech person, Bill Gates, is mm -hmm. the one who predicts how, <laughs> how uh, pandemics will come and so many other things that he should have no business with. But the fact that he's a millionaire and maybe cashing out and all that, a big, multi-billionaire, <laughs> <laughs> and maybe cashing out uh, on it and all that, making people get a lot of concern. So if AI is developed to the point that they have a mind of them, their own, mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be a very big thing. And I have this feeling in my head that one day we just might destroy ourselves and begin anew. There's even a possibility that this world has existed before. We don't know. People, there are people who say that as well. But I think if we continue in the way we are going, we just might destroy ourselves and civilization will have to start from scratch again. No, as I said, some people have written. There's no doubt that um, technology has improved life on Earth. There's just no doubt about it. I mean, we're enjoying what we're doing right now is thanks to technology and it's been evolving and evolving and evolving. But do we know where to draw the line? Do we know where to say enough? Mm. We, should <laughs> let, we should let God be God. Yes. Because we cannot play God. We, we can be intelligent creators, uh, creatures of God, but we shouldn't play God. And as soon as we begin to play God, it means that... Uh, we are going to go above and beyond. Uh, we can't play God. <laughs> any, any attempt to play God will mean the destruction of mankind, ultimately. As you saw in the Bible, mm -hmm. where they built that tower, mm -hmm. they were building to get to heaven, and mm -hmm. at some them. point God confounded their languages, and that was the end of that tower. So I think mankind should learn, take a lesson from that, yeah. and know when to stop, especially when those who, are, who built these technologies are themselves okay. raising the concerns. Mm -hmm. As I said, Jeffrey is raising that concern, and he comes from a history of, you know, mathematicians. His grandfather was into mathematics, was mat into technology, his father was, and he has been into mathematics, been into science, been into technology. It's something he's very passionate about. He's been in Google for over 10 years and developed some very great technologies. But he's the one raising these concerns and saying, we may have taken this too far already, and we may need to take a look at what we are creating. They will not listen to him. Mm -hmm. I, I assure you, they will not listen to him. Climate change is one of the things that all of us are seeing. We're seeing the science and all that, and there are people who are still doing what they're doing uh, regardless. Uh, well, like you said, mathematician. He came from a family of mathematicians. But if you live in Lagos, you have to be a mathematician to be able to <laughs> navigate the traffic here in Lagos, and that's why... Uh, you need to look at LASMA. They will give you a travel advisory every day, tell you where uh, the traffic is heavy and where the traffic is not heavy. For instance, the uh, boundary roundabout is busy, according to LASMA, uh, as a result of influx and commercial activities. Mobile road in and out is good. Marine Beach intersection in what uh, Nagav to connect area B is good. Outward journey, a papa through the marine, marina beach, or bridge rather, to connect Igomu and Ijora is good. Both entry points uh, of Sifax and Ijora or Lokba inward total is good. The ramp uh, through total on the bridge, inward navy junction to connect Leventis is also good. So a lot of, a lot of places are good uh, this morning. Traffic movement from marine beach. Uh, through Dalami connecting Nagav down to Area B is good. A Leganza to connect a Tisala down to Mr. Biggs inwards. Uh, Armour tank to Liverpool roundabout in and out is good. And this moment, at this moment, a Papa GRA in and out is also good. And return journey from Wolf Gate back to Eleganza. Flower Mills, Leventis, Ascending Dalami Bridge, Inward Ijora 7 Up is good. So there are a lot of goods this morning. And if you're moving, well, when I was on my way to this place this morning, the traffic was quite good. So maybe that's what is also in all the places that LASMA has given us, that they are good. We're hoping it will still be good when you leave home to get to work, wherever that might be. Okay, well, hopefully that happens for you. Uh, let's take a look at Top Trending. 
All right, top trending, we have our first top trending, Nigerian soldiers caught assaulting citizens at Kaduna. Uh, we do have a silent film to that. Can we have it roll? Go. Who is the talking? Eh? Who is the talking? I'm calling my friend. Go. Okay, wait. My name is calling me. Who is calling? Off the phone. Off the phone. I said off the phone. I hear you are making call. I'm calling you? my friend. She where she? That's why. Lie down. Lie down. Lie down inside. Lie down. I said lie down. Lie down inside. No go lie down. Okay, wait. Lie down. I said lie down. We are with our friends. We are not watching yet. Lie down inside. You don't go lie down. I say lie down. You know what do? Okay, 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 you know what do? Well, that's happened in Kaduna State. We understand that the military has responded to this video that trended and have promised to investigate and get to the bottom of the matter. We thank God for social media, we thank God for the technology that we were talking about because mm -hmm. a lot of times these kind of things happened but um, they were never reported or they were never captured and that deniability was there. They could deny that this thing never happened and, and of course how can you show proof because you are not allowed to take still photographs in those days and who was moving with the camera if not a cameraman. So now everybody has a phone and these things can be captured but these people are supposed to be in charge of the territorial integrity of Nigeria. They should be at the borders. They should be um, warning of any danger coming into the country. What are they doing? What business do they have in the civilian population that will give them the right or the opportunity to deal with civilians the way they do? This is not the first time, you know. The police do their own. We, it's bad enough with the police <laughs> that we're taught to to be able to... To be our friend. Yeah, to be our friend, to, be be our friend, to manage the, the civil people. civilian society. And then now the army going into the fray as well and doing what they do, I think it's really bad. And I like the response of the authorities anytime this kind of a thing happens. Yeah. And they're, they're being, well, maybe not proactive enough, but their reactions are always very good. Uh, the way I see them. So please. And in, in that video, which I had initially thought was a silent film, but we had track up to it, mm -hmm. uh, you saw uh, we, we heard a lady resisting you know, the brutality and, and not uh, allowing herself to be coward and, you know, not entering the. At least she was trying to explain exactly. what was happening. Exactly. Of that for meaning what? What kind of. It's, it's really disheartening when the people you should run to for protection are the ones that you now fear. It's, it's terrible. It and is. that's why some, in some places the Boko Haram and the bandits are festering because these people offer protection and the people pay for their services. Things that the government should do ordinarily. The army, the, pol the police should do ordinarily. Private citizens who have now taken laws into their hands are the ones that are doing it. And sometimes you ask the community people and they say, what can we do? Because the government has forgotten they us. They are now at the mercies of the terrorists and the bandits, it, it's which is terrible. very sad. It's and sometimes you hear of these things happening, and it grieves you to, to, to know that these are fellow Nigerians mm. within our territory yeah. being terrorized, being brutalized. And we hear all these stories almost on a daily basis. And yeah. It's sad. We've interviewed uh, Reverend Hiap from Cardinal yeah. State repeatedly on this station and it's always been uh, stories of woes, woes and woes and you just hope that that story will change soon, mm. especially as uh, a new government is said to come into play. Yes, the new government should know that protection of lives and property is a very paramount thing, is a primary thing that people should have from the government and nobody else because if you give it out to everybody to protect themselves, we never know where, what it will degenerate into. We saw a community that felt helpless now turbining a terrorist, a known terrorist, because they needed the protection from terrorists. Who does that? Hmm. So if, if things are allowed to go the way they, they are going, then terrorists will now share Nigeria into small pockets of uh, uh, places of juris jurisdiction. You know, terrorist A is, is taking care of this place, terrorist B is taking care of this place, which should never be. So government, the next one especially that is coming in, should make sure 
that we are protected. We, our families, and our properties, we are all protected. Yeah, you want to take the second top trending? Yeah, well, um, a grief Nigerian state protest at the presidential tribunal. Um, we also know that uh, the security uh, agencies were also on ground trying to prevent people from uh, protesting and all that, but Nigerians protested. And this brings... There you have the picture. Yeah. Now, this could have been solved if they had accepted to televise the uh, proceedings at the courts, because a lot of people would have sat back at home to watch what is going on. Because where they are, they can't see what is happening in the court, so they will always only say what they're saying outside there. But if they had televised it, there are a lot of people that would have wanted to follow. And I think some of these things wouldn't have come up. Yes, but there were calls for it to be televised, but it's up to the judiciary, I think, to decide if they want to go public. Some have argued that televising it may put the judges under pressure or make them an anxious. Some people are, uh, have stage fright. Don't they need the, the pressure? According to some Don't argument. Well, well, obviously they cannot be forced to televise it. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they would have televised it since there were calls for it to be televised, right? So here we are, the way it is, it started already. Uh, we've been looking forward to it starting. It has started, started yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's just keep watching to see how it will pan out. If you ask me as a person, I, I would say it's a lame excuse to say that they have stage fright. A judge has stage fright. Uh, do your thing and leave the rest to God. There are countries that televise this. Mm -hmm. There are people who televise this. They don't have two heads. It's just a, a way of transparency and exactly. all that. And if you talk about pressure, you need the pressure to do the right thing because you cannot do the wrong thing under pressure when people are looking at you. There's everybody, my eyes are on you, and you will be forced to do the right thing. I heard something said by some of the judges yesterday, and they said... Um, the peace of the country uh, must be taken into consideration. And I was wondering where they were taking this to. Hmm. So what do they mean, the peace of the country? Is it the peace of the country that we should just let sleeping dogs lie? Or is the peace of the country that there should be justice done? Peace of the country in what regard? And who is it going to favor? Peace according to who? And who are you considering when you talk about peace? Is it the aggrieved people who think there is no justice done? Or the people who say, okay, we have done the abrac abracadabra, just let us do what we need to do and get out. What peace are you talking about? Peace cannot exist where there is no justice, if you ask me. Well, the Chief Justice of the Federation is definitely aware, no doubt, that the world is watching, mm -hmm. Nigerians are watching. This is a very, very uh, sensitive time in our history as a people. This is probably the biggest tribunal, electoral tribunal uh, in Africa that's ever happened. We have five of the political parties that... Uh, went to cut over this, so I understand that one we threw as it yesterday. Well, some, some papers are carrying that the case was struck out, the AA, mm, the AA party. Out. But uh, others say they withdrew their, their, their case. The so. initial narrative was that they withdrew. In fact, I understood they were to withdraw yesterday. Mm. So that was the initial story mm. that they were going to withdraw as it yesterday because of some whatever within their party. I want to go with the fact that they withdrew. <laughs> whatever else the story might be, they withdrew. They did the right thing and they saw whatever uh, was for and against them and they withdrew. Yeah, so the major so, contenders are out there, the Labour Party, the PDP, the PDP against the APC. So it's, it's a hot one and uh, we're all watching. We're watching. Let's see how it plays out and uh, we hope that whatever the outcome, Nigeria will be the better for it because we can't, we can't, um, we can't, we can't survive an uprising. We don't need an uprising of any kind. We're not even talking about a war, but we don't need any kind of... of we don't even need another NSAS. We don't. We no, don't need NSAS it at all. Was, But haven't you noticed, and I had asked uh, when we had our uh, ballot 2023, one of the things that was very obvious to Nigerians was how calmly the youth conducted themselves mm -hmm. in the wake of all that transpired during the elections. Mm -hmm. There were serious uh, grievances, there were so many irregularities, yet, well, they were complained about, but there were no 
you know, riots. Mm -hmm. There were no, the youth didn't take the law into their hands. They were so well behaved. And it was quite instructive to see that happen. Mm -hmm. And they were taking the intellectual way because if they had a fight, they would go to Twitter, they would go to the social media. Yeah. And so it was a good outlet. Yes, but coming out to the, to the physical, they were quite well behaved, like you, you said. And whoever is in charge, who, whatever the outcome is going to be, should never take that piece for granted, should never take that behavior for granted because uh, people of nowadays are a, a volatile type and it's not, it's not like they just want to be, but a lot of them just want the right thing to be done. And if you are not able to do it, they'll, they'll be asking you to leave the stage for people who can do it. A lot of people before them couldn't say that. Um, maybe because they didn't have that uh, uh, power of anonymity, mm -hmm. maybe because they didn't have um, a lot of things that they have these days, youths have these days. But whatever be the case, the right thing should just be done. And if it is done, everybody will be happy for it. Yeah, let justice be seen to be done. I mean, those who uh, belong to the APC will tell you that they won the election fair mm -hmm. and square. And the opponents, the opposition are saying, no, you didn't win it fair and square. But it's up to the judges now to, to, to deliver justice, to look at the cases and deliver justice. So we are watching to see whether justice will be delivered or not for those who are seeking to annul it and for those who are seeking to protect it. So it's, it's, uh, let's see if the, just, the, 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 justice, the judiciary would do justice to this case. Yeah. It's possible the APC won it. And if they won it, fine. Let everybody see that they won it. We know for a fact that a wrong was done by INEC, not necessarily APC, by INEC. Whether they were influenced by APC is another case. We do not know about that. But INEC went back on his own words, ate his own words, and then did the wrong thing. But if it can be interpreted by the lawyers and everybody to say that they did the right thing, mm -hmm. let us see proven that they did the right thing and all that. And we see a winner um, emerge, you know, in a clean way. Whether it's APC, whether it's AA, whether it's a, whatever party, let us just see the process that led up to that mm -hmm. and how clean it was. How and clean it was. Let us just and INEC is set to prove to you that the election was, you know, clean. <laughs> I understand they've earmarked billions of Naira to defend their stance. Our Naira. <laughs> <laughs> because it's, INEC has no money of its own. Of its own. Exactly. It's our money, taking our money to fight with us. That is something that needs to be looked into. Uh, when EFCC should move, they don't move. When ICPC should move, they don't move. If 400 billion was voted for INEC to do the right thing, conduct election in the right way, where are they getting the extra money to go and fight uh, these cases in court? Uh, should INEC even be saying whatever we have said, we have said? It's, it's terrible. So let's see how it plays out. Let's see how it plays out. You're watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It is a Tuesday edition. Technophile, we'll call it. We'll be right back to take a look at the headlines. Do stay with us.